In this video we are focusing on rates of change and specifically those around birth and death rates. Now you may have seen this in geography and I've got a couple of graphs just to kind of show you what it might have looked like. So first of all we've got this map of the world from 2002 and notice that these the infant mortality rates um, so this is infant deaths per 1,000 live births and this is the least deaths, so these, most of these children survive and most up here. So here, less than 10 deaths per 1,000, so that's one per 100, so it's about 1% in these countries. Right up to here, at least 100 per 1,000, so at least one in every 10 babies is not making it who are born alive. So that kind of gives you a bit of a picture there. Um, but we're not going to be looking at infant mortality, but we're going to be looking at crude death rates generally, which is per 1,000 people of the whole population, how many are dying. And in this case, the darker the shade, the more are dying. So here, lots of people. And then when it's pale, fewer people. Interestingly, the US and the UK are darker than you might expect. And we'll look at that a bit later on based on kind of the age of our population in general and why that, why that might be. And we'll also be looking at the birth rates. So here, map of the world with the birth rates. And once again, the darker it is, um, the more births there are per 1,000. Each time it's per 1,000 people, that's what our crude is. So you can see not many are born here. UK and America has more of a birth rate. And then the darker it is, this means for every 1,000 people of the population, uh, 36 to 50 are births. Okay, so you've got quite a few births happening in these countries. Okay, that's just a general idea of what it might look like. So what is a birth rate and what is a death rate and with crude death rates? And why would we use them? Well, they're quite useful because if you knew that your country had a high birth rate, you're probably going to need more schools, more education, maybe some more housing. If you have high death rates, you might have to think more about the provision medical health care you're giving or whether you need more um, old people's homes to look after those older people. So it gives you a bit of an idea and actually can use crude rates for unemployment as well. So the crude birth rate, crude birth rate is how many um, births per 1,000 of the population and death is how many deaths per 1,000. So for crude, you're looking at per 1,000 of the population. How many births or how many deaths, or if you're looking at employ unemployment, how many people are unemployed. Okay. And we will look at the formula for this as well. Now this is really similar to percentage, but instead of multiplying by 100 for percentage, you're multiplying by 1,000. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same. And in fact, in some questions, you can actually work out the rates of change for a population per 100 rather than 1,000 if it's stated in the question. So kind of think of it like percentage, but instead of per cent, per 100, you're looking at per 1,000. So here's your formula. And there's your formula. So it's number of deaths or births or unemployed people out of the total population times 1,000. We'll have a look at a worked example so you can see how similar this is to percentages. Okay, so we've got a small village in Lincolnshire and has a population of just 5,845 in 2016. And then in 2016, 127 babies are born in this village. We have to work out the crude birth rate. Well, we just do the number of births, which is 127, out of the population, the total population, which is 5,845. And then multiply by 1,000 because it's crude, okay? And we then get 21.7 to one decimal place births per 100 people, 1,000 people. So that means for every 1,000 people of the population, there are 21.7 births, and that is the crude birth rate. Now for part B, it wants the crude death rate, so we just do the same thing, 201 out of 5,845 
times 1000 and it's 34.4 to one decimal place deaths per 1000 of the population so you've got a higher crude death rate than a birth rate now this is quite useful because you can now think of this in terms of well, what kind of population do we think we'll have in there or age population now this can be quite misleading because we know there's around 34 deaths per 1,000 in this particular village. But if I want to compare this with other villages to see if it's, you know, a safer place to live or the age people are dying and stuff, it's not very useful because each village and each area will have a different makeup. One village, this one for example, might be mainly retired people. And that'll have a higher death rate than someone who, a village that's got lots of young couples and families. So as the distribution of ages is different in every population, we need a way to compare these populations, to compare them which takes into account the fact that they'll have different ages. And we do this with something called a standard population. So one way of thinking of a standard population is as a pie chart, because basically a standard population is this hypothetical population of a thousand people and in this hypothetical, so um, not quite imaginary, but kind of, it isn't real, it's like a base one, hypothetical population of a thousand people, it represents the whole. So the same percentage, if this was a thousand people, it would have the right percentages, the right piece of the pie for each age group. And you can use it, it's really useful because it means you can compare um, populations that have very different sizes, very different ages, obviously. So this is for the US. The US is huge. It'd be really hard to compare that with, for example, the population of Andorra, which is a really small country. But if you're looking at this hypothetical standard population, you can compare the standard population of both because they both are out of a thousand. They both have the um, pieces, the proportions correct to the whole population. And we have a formula to help you calculate the number of people in each age group in the standard population. And it's as you might expect from a pie chart, but we'll formalise it in this formula. OK, so this first bit, the fraction, just represents the fraction of the pie. And you multiply by a thousand because we want it for this hypothetical 1000 people. OK. We're going to use um, this in a worked example in a second, which is going to get one extra formula, and that is a standardised rate of change. And that uses this standard population to compare the same age group in different populations and allows realistic comparisons to be made, which we've kind of discuss discussed. Um, so you can calculate standardised birth, death or unemployment rates from the crude rates with this formula. OK, so for the standardised rate, you can do the crude rate divided by a thousand times by the standard population, which you will have already calculated with the previous formula. OK, let's look at a worked example with this. So this worked example is about um, a town Y and it's got population and deaths. And it's also got this regarding the actual age groups. So we're going to calculate the standard population first and then standardised death rate for each age group. So let's start off with the standard population. And I'm just going to note down my formula just to remind myself. So it's the number in the age group over the total population times by 1,000. So let's have a look at that. With this age group, there are 2,647 2, out of, well, I don't know the total population, so I'm going to have to sum, add up all of these, which will get me 43,595. And then I just multiply that by 1,000. That will give me 60.72. Okay, so that means per 1,000, I'd expect 60.72 of those people between the ages of 0 and 19. Okay, I'm then going to do it for the next one. If you feel confident already, pause the video and check your answer. Okay, so I've just done the same method again. 
12,743 divided by the total population multiplied by 1,000. Now that's a lot higher. So I'd expect if I took a stratified sample, so a proportional amount of 1,000 people, that 292 of them would be the eight between the ages of 20 and 35. And I'm just going to finish that off now. Feel free to pause and finish it off yourself. Okay, and those should be your answers to part A. Now for part B, we're looking at calculating and comparing the standardised death rate for each age group. So let's have a look at my deaths here. And I'm going to calculate first of all the crude death rate and then the standardised death rate. Well, my crude death rate will be the number of deaths out of the total population, which is still 43,000, and then multiplied by 1,000. And that gives you a very low crude death rate, which is what you'd expect for 0 to 19 year olds. So 1.3 of them per 1,000 are dying. So let's pop that all in. So I've calculated the crude death rate. I'm going to use that to calculate the standardised death rate so that I can actually comment on this. So I'm going to recap what the standardised death rate is, which is the crude rate over 1,000 times the standard population. So if I have a look at this first one, my crude rate is 1.31 divided by 1,000 and multiplied by my standard population, 60.72, and that would give me 0 0.08. Let's do the same for the next one. So my crude rate is 22.98 over 1,000 multiplied by 292.30, which will give me 6.72. Now see if you can pause the video and complete the other two boxes. Okay, so if I look at these numbers, I can see that my standardised death rate here is really low for under 20 year olds and for 20 to 35, still pretty low. Now the highest is here, over 65s, which is what you'd expect more of them to have to be dying um, although this is almost as high so I've got nearly as many people in my age bracket 36 to 65 dying as in the age bracket of over 65 and I would just write a statement to say that just a comment at this point you can also use standardized rates to compare other factors like gender marital status or even levels of income we're going to look at one more brief worked example, um, which is us commenting on a graph, and then you'll do some practice questions yourself. So in this worked example, I've got a graph from the World Bank Open Data, so you can get this online. And this is looking at the crude death rates in the UK between 2000 and 2016, these is actual data, and describe what's happening to these and how this can be misleading. This is a time series graph, really, isn't it? Because it's something that's happening over time. And if you have a look, from 2000, there seems to be a general decreasing trend until 2011. After then, there's a bit of an increase. 2013, a decrease, a bit of an increase and a decrease again. Okay. Um, this might be misleading as we don't know the death rate for different age categories. Like we just worked out a minute ago, death rate for different age categories. In this case, we don't know what the age makeup of the population is. It could be that it's getting younger, it could be it's getting older as we go through. So this is quite misleading in this. So although they do decrease from 2000 to 2011, increase, decrease, increase, decrease, actually it's misleading because we don't know the different age categories, death rates only for the total population. Okay, so if you can pop that in your own words and then have a go at the practice questions.